You are watching the Justin TV Invitational, cast by myself, Total Biscuit. Ladies and gentlemen, my overlay has disappeared. Yarg! Welcome! Welcome to Shoutcraft right here. And I bring you Adra in the green trunks. He's playing Zerg here on the whatever the bloody hell this is, the Shad Temple, isn't it? Versus his opponent, Druby, in the red trunks. He is playing Terran. Druby with a shock victory after Adra just really gave up. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's confusing things about Idris play later on in the game. It's like he just, it feels like he can't be bothered. And I, I hate that. I really do because he's such a fine player, and it would be very upsetting to see him playing that way. Whatever the case, he GG'd, or more to the point, he didn't. I proxy GG'd for him, and he is now one nil down against Druby. Druby could potentially knock Idra out, which would be a second member of Team Root beating Idra, which seems absurd when you think about it. But there you go. Not to take away from Team Root, but we are talking about Idra here, who is one of the best Zerg players in the world and certainly one of the best Western players in the world. He's already down to the loser's bracket after losing to Minigun and Druby is looking to make it 2-0 in the Root Kills Idra Cup, which is what this is turning out to be right now. It's not what he wants. Absolutely not. Idra really needs to go for it. Hardcore. And we'll see some of that. Hopefully trademark excellent, methodical, and highly, highly mechanical play that always comes in from Idra. Such a fine player. Drew of the Barracks coming down right here. Not actually bothering to wall off an intriguing idea. I suppose he just, can't be, one, can't be bothered, and two, knows that Idra probably won't go in for an early attack, but you never actually know. You never know what will come out of the mystical sacks of thinking, the thinking sack. It's what I imagine Idra's brain to be, this huge mammoth sack of calculations and thoughts and strategies, and he dips into the sack to pick out a strategy, and sometimes it's seemingly at random, but you know it's never, never actually at random. It's calculated, folks. Everything he does is calculated. When he gets up for breakfast in the morning, his cereal is calculated down to the last Rice crispy. You know that for a fact, because that's the kind of player that he is. He is a machine, folks. A machine. There we go. Idra with the fast expansion. And uh, no big surprise for that. Open it with the expansion against that. And Drewby going straight for the factory. Could be seeing yet more Hellion play. Reactor coming up. Almost certainly seeing Hellion play very early on by him. The swap around, I would think. No early Marines. Again, kind of risky. But he knows his opponent is fast expanding. So there's no real threat of Zerglings coming in all that early. And it's kind of a shame because, you know what? If he had gone for that spawning pool early and he had actually gone in, he could have just killed Drewby right there. Uh, done a huge amount of damage, at least economically. Probably not taking him out entirely, but there you go. Idra sticking to what he knows best, which is to fast expand against a Terran opponent. Looking for the redeployment. There's the swap around. The Hellions are on their way. And will Idra be able to repulse those Hellions? I really do not know, honestly. I really do not know. He hasn't got an awful lot on the field. Straight into the starport, though. So... We don't really know what he's going to do with that. It is the 1-1-1 one, one, one build, which means it's flexible. There's a lot of transitions coming in. I have to wonder, actually, if he deliberately deployed it there, because Idra has just spotted that starport, and perhaps he is now thinking. Perhaps he's faking him out right there. It's a good place to put it, purposely putting it there. I think, anyway. You never know. You never actually know. It is a possibility that he's not doing anything of the sort. Hellions on the field. There are two now rolling out. Does Idra have anything to push them back with? There we go. Eight Zerglings on the way. Two Queens, but not really deployed in the optimum position. Idra moves out right there. No block against it at all. No Metabolic Boost available for another, uh, I would say, minute at least. Which means a lot of damage could be coming in right here. However, the Queen with good defense, using the Queen as a fulcrum, if anything, to sort of pivot those Hellions around right there. Good roasting going on right there, though. Yes, it is very good indeed. Much, much better than the Jersey Shore guy against Donald Trump, that I can tell you. A reference that not a lot of people will get to. Two more Hellions on the way. This is going to be messy, honestly. I don't see how I just going to be able to push this back, but you never know what he's got in his bag of tricks. Lair coming out and no roaches. Right. Looking for that metabolic boost, looking for the numbers. Here comes the economic harassment. Brings around the side right there. Again, using the queen as that defensive unit and doing well as cast... Catch us one. It's not bad, but still, it's good numbers right there. Can he take a second? That's what he looks for. There's the metabolic boost. It's when he needed it. And there's the surround. It's good. He takes one. Catches a second. More Hellions coming in right here. But Hydra with amazing defense, with bare minimum, I might say, in terms of units right here. Still looking for that Lair Morph and trying to catch his opponent off. You never know, he might be able to pull it off right here. The Queen holds the line once again. Good surround right here. Takes those Zerglings out. Hydra holding back. And that Queen is doing so very well with the defense here. Still, there are four. Now three. 
Amazing defense here by Idra. Extremely good. Continues with the Hellion push. Droob is going for it once again. Banshee on the field right now, which may change the state of the game. However, we are getting Mutalisks, and once those Mutalisks are out, there's not an awful lot his opponent can do about them. So it comes down to, can Hydra hold this off long enough? There are seven Hellions and a Banshee on the field. Bear in mind, Banshee takes Queen, and you know that for a fact. This is not chess, folks, but it might as well be. It's a good surround, but unfortunately, the placement as he moved out got a bunch of them roasted. Banshee badly hurt, a good transfuse there to get him back on his feet. No big worries as of yet. He really can't take that Queen out. Queen takes so little damage from Hellions, it's not even funny. Goes in with the pressure again, though. Pressure continues to be applied. However, the economic situation is actually in Hydra's favor. Bear this in mind. More drones available. Spine Crawler coming down now, finally. That Spire will be complete. One Queen roasted. An unfortunate loss right there. Can he snipe off another 20? Looks for this. The surround. Grabs one. Can he grab a second? Yes, he can. Needs to pull back right there. Great play once again. Excellent micromanagement. This is the Hydra we know and love or slash hate. Whichever you prefer, you've got to respect it, folks. Spire almost complete. Looks for the surround. Completely barbecued there. He'll take a Hellion with him by the looks of it. Queen needs to back away before that gets roasted. Once that spine crawler is up, that's going to cause a lot of problems for Drooby right there. Going to lose the Queen. Hydra holds it. He holds it and he loses the Queen deliberately. Could have probably backed away there, but he would have exposed his mineral line, and that would have been a bad thing indeed. The Spire is now complete. Can he actually build any Mutalisks? He will have the money for it momentarily. There you go, Spine Crawler up, which is going to cause problems. That will nail down a good few of them. Pushes his way in there. Drooby getting a little bit desperate, perhaps, but the defense of Hydra is not looking all that solid right now, but there you go. Two Queens still available for it. Pulls away immediately, avoids all damage to the mineral line. So, so very well played. Hydra having to pull off mining, however, so that's going to cause problems. Drooby going in with only a single force grouped up right there. Those queens picking them off. Hellion's not doing a huge amount. Rolls down there, and now the Mutalisks on the field, and not an awful lot available to repulse them. Still, only three. Four coming in right here. Little bit of economic damage done to Hydra. Quite a lot, in fact, as he charges through there, but he throws them all away. Now... I don't imagine he's going to push those forward anymore, and indeed he's not. Transition through now to the tech lab, looking for the, uh, perhaps, the Thors at some point, but right now relying on siege tanks. There's the deployment of the expansion for him. Economically, Hydra lagging behind just a little bit. How much damage can he do with those Mutalists? He goes in the line right here. The uh, Not an awful lot of defense available for him. Good sniping off. He looks to try and take some kills back, but not a huge number. Doesn't quite have what he needs. Not yet. Not yet at any rate. Hydra droning it up hard, folks, getting his economy back on track. He hasn't lost a huge amount. He does have air dominance right now, and that will remain for the time being. Stims out with the Marines, kind of wasted. Drives Hydra away. Hydra looking for that critical mass in terms of the number of mutilists he's got on the field. Once he's got that, he'll be able to do some good damage. A little bit of sniping going on. He really can't go in there too much. It's a little bit risky. We're going to have a look at this. This is actually quite vulnerable, although not as vulnerable as you might like. Fairly short distance between that marine defensive line. Could very easily undeploy. Can he snipe off at something there? He looks for it. Stimmed out of the way. Good bit of damage done. Look at that. Some good micromanagement done by Hydra, but he does lose a single mutalisk, which is perhaps not what he's looking to do. There we go. And 12 muters now on the field. Will the muters actually do the job? Or will Drewby be able to push out? Drewby, very aggressive player right here. Pushes in and pushes out. See Shank available right there. Still more harassment being done. How much damage can he really do with that? He catches most of the air defense out of position, however. Drewby is going to have to defend against that quite vigorously. Okay. GG, I suppose. There you go. Hydra's out of the tournament. Underwhelming. Okay, folks. We'll be back with some more matches in just a few short moments.